Welcome to West of Tulsa. I'm C.J. Ward, and we are broadcasting from Studio 3 in Ventura, California. The whole crew is here again for another week. We have Beth, Gabe, Helm, you don't? and Dan. All right, thanks, guys, for stopping by. Because our guest today is Kevin Haverly from uh, Community Hot Rod Project based out of Santa Barbara, California. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you for, you for having Yeah, thank you for having me. This is going to be fun. So tell us, what is Community Hot Rod Project? What is What are you guys trying to accomplish with it? So we are a 501c3 nonprofit. That's an all-age program uh, to teach the youth and the young at heart how to work on cars and connect in the community through cars. And uh, also open up for vocational trades and skills and stuff using the car as a tool. And this is something that we've talked about here at West of Tulsa, how important this is, because a lot of these trades are being lost. Yeah. A lot of the older guys are getting older and dying off, sadly. But you got the youngins who just want to know this stuff, but somebody's got to teach them, right? Exactly. And it's like one of our main things is put down the phone, grab a tool, and it's all ages. So if you're four years old, or if you're 95 and want to pass on your knowledge, we all get out there, get dirty, and have fun. And you brought up four years old because your daughter, you were just telling us, tell us the story about your daughter going in and wanting to be just like you. (laughs) Yeah, so (laughs) even when she was two, I got photos of her, uh, second I bust out the tools, she's there going through the sockets, and she can actually, like, identify and put all of them in order (laughs) and everything, but... If I go and crawl underneath the car, she's like, oh, daddy, I want to help and I want to get dirty. So she'll get underneath the car, find the greasiest thing, <laughs> grab it and like rub, rub herself. Yeah. Against oh. it. Look, I did it. I'm good. Like, nice. Just yeah. like daddy. Oh, oh, yeah. That's great. So this is a, a, a beautiful marriage where you're trying to bring the young kids, yep. keeps them off the streets, keeps them out of trouble. They may even find find out they're really talented at something like that. Exactly. And then you team them up with... Yeah, old so, fogies like us. Yeah, <laughs> so I got uh, hey, what's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's really cool is uh, through all the years that I've been uh, in the industry professionally, I've networked really well with a bunch of really cool fabricators and customizers, and just been able to develop the friendships and ask them to come on out and mentor and be guest mentors for the program, and with that. Uh, we have some pretty pretty cool things that happen and and stuff and it, it's really it's really interesting to see the kids connect with their idols that they see on Instagram and social media and just be like this person's here well like check out the build and I got to do this and and things like that and take pride so, in what they take they pride do. what yeah. they're doing and what's really sad is in Santa Barbara County area out of the local stuff in the south part of the county. Out of the four high schools, there is no auto shop program for the last 10 to 15 years. Yeah, oh, wow. And so they cut it. Uh, up in North County, like uh, San Inez and Lompoc and San Maria, they have an auto shop program. But what we're trying to bring to the table is a little bit different. It isn't just auto shop class where you're wrenching on motors. We're teaching how to do rendering designs, how to do fabrication, how to do body and paint work, how to take uh, what you learn with the car and how it applies into other industries like aerospace or into architecture and apparel design and marketing and stuff like that. And how it all uh, crosses over and the the fun that you can have with the networking of everybody that's involved. So and you've got a pretty good group. I mean, yeah. So I, 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 Kevin asked me at one point. You went before the Santa Barbara School District. Was it maybe two, three months ago? Yeah. You guys were trying to get the armory so you could make that kind of a home base, right? Exactly. And the the, the people that he brought in, it really impressive. I mean, Thank you. former CEO of. Uh, Boeing or no? No, we had a, a lead engineer and designer for Boeing. Okay, had um, Dana Newquest, yeah. who is just Mr. Montecito oh, and yeah. car, Mr. Car Guy. Mr. Car Guy. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, Steve Nipper from Soul Wave Water. We have Michael Baker from uh, the Boys and Girls Club, uh, and then some of the influential guys in town that just have a passion for cars, and then getting out behind the message that we're trying to do and just be able to expand the, the youth, uh, like, I guess, uh, vocational uh, vocabulary yeah. and, and get them to have some fun and see it's, it's actually fun getting dirty and, and 
busting a knuckle and stuff like that. <laughs> That's so, a no brainer. What was the district's response? Um, they they love the idea. They want to come basically come back to it and they they have an idea of what they want to use the property in about two to three years, but they want us to blend with what their other idea oh, is. Oh, interesting. Mm. And so in the meantime, I've asked uh, both Santa Barbara High School's uh, principal and the district if we could uh, use uh, the old ROP auto body class oh. because it's empty. It's okay. you're being used for storage. So I'm waiting for an answer back, and I got a uh, one of the guys from on campus who's been one of our spearheads uh, inside man for us to uh, basically get things ready. And he's actually gone over there on his like free time to clear out the cold classroom and awesome. get oh, things wow. ready to try right. to roll it for us to just get things rolling. Maybe some new momentum. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. so wow. it's 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 pretty cool. It's and. The community support behind our vision for this has been immense. It's three years ago, we started with five guys with my crazy idea in my living room, and we have over 120 members involved oh. right now. Oh, wow. So, you should be so proud. Yeah. yeah so cool. it's it's actually pretty cool. I, mean, I actually get emotional over it oh. because it's... Sorry. No, don't <laughs> be. It's a, it, it actually, it's a lot of like blood, sweat, and tears. That goes in goes into it, but it's worth it. I love to pay it forward and help people. So, and I have to say, so many parents appreciate all that you have done because, frankly, you've got a lot of kids yeah. who have, like you're saying, on their phone or they don't really have a purpose. Sure. Other and and then not every kid loves class. No. Right. That was and me. we talked about that during the the school board meeting. Yeah. Oh, not every kid, and I was one of them, didn't belong in a classroom. Yeah. Really. And I wanted to be out there kind of wrenching what Kevin does. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's yeah. when I was in high school. Like, my teachers saw that I had a talent for cars, and i check in for class, and then I'd head straight grab their keys and go straight to the auto shop and work on their car during normal oh class. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Wow. And so <laughs> that's, that's awesome. And then i turn in my homework uh, later on uh, in the day and be like, yeah, here's, here's all my stuff, but wow. your car is perfect. That is awesome. Well, what you're talking about doing really is ultimately changing lives. Yeah. Taking lives and young lives and turning them into a direction and saying, here you go, this is a great direction to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and doing it with great people involved in, and it doesn't matter what your background is, you can you can be a chef, you could be an architect. It all coincides and overlaps with the different things and projects and what you can bring to the table around a car. Right. Mm. And your team building, you're teaching these social skills that isn't offered in, in school anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, you don't you don't have the personal ability of being able to just be able to open up and connect with people. Yeah. And so we're trying to bring that back in a, in a new way. And like you That's said, awesome. get, get, take that phone out of your face. And yeah. Well, them. it's interesting because we have a huge contrast because a, a previous guest of ours, uh, Steve Feist, who is self-taught um, painter, fabricator, engine builder, hot rodder, mm -hmm. uh, grew up, you know, in the uh, 70s and 80s uh, at his dad's shop back when, you know, Auto shop was still a big thing, you know, even into the maybe into the 90s, even mm -hmm. um, where that was like, you know, being a mechanic was cool. It was a good, it was a good occupation. It was something to, to be proud of. And it was taught. Yeah. And like you said, in the last, what, 10, 15, maybe even 20 years, even um, that's kind of like gone by the wayside. And this generation, this current generation, especially the millennial generation, you know, they barely even know how to drive a manual uh, yeah. car. Right. Yeah. Mm. So here you are, you know, and I would imagine and this is, goes into the next question I want to ask you is um, what do you think is the biggest challenge you are facing right now trying to get this message out there and get support behind you? Our for us, the the biggest challenge is getting our facility. We have the team. We have the infrastructure. We just don't have our home base yet. And so we've been working with the Santa Barbara City, the school district, because originally when I thought of this idea and we were going, I wanted to take over the Western General hangars at the Santa Barbara Airport and uh, turn one of them, restore both hangars, because... That was the official site of the first sanctioned drag race in the United States back in oh, the wow. early 50s uh, and stuff like that. And all the if you go on in the property there and you look at the hangars, you can see the original outlines on the buildings for the uh, grandstands and everything oh. like that. It's, it's still really there. cool. It's oh. still there. Yeah. 
And oh so uh, some of the guys that are a part of our crew are different uh, historians and archaeologists and stuff like that. So we have all this cool uh, like artifacts and memorabilia that we want to bring to the table that once we do have a site, it's going to be like you're walking into a, a vintage speed shop mm. and it's, nice. it's going to well, be different. And I, we talked about the airport hangar one because not mm -hmm. only did you just touch down the history. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know the Santa Barbara races were out at the airport. I mean, that James Dean, one of his last oh, races really? was out there in a 356 before mm -hmm. he wrecked the spider. Yep. But he was out there with some great photos of um, James Dean out there racing. And there's a lot of history out there. That would have been a perfect location for you. Exactly. And we're still working on it, too. Okay, good. Nice. So that, uh, we've actually uh, met with the, the newer uh, appointed uh, director for the airport, and he loved the idea. He was more open to it than the former. And so I've just been waiting for a, a um, what is it, a hydrology report because it's on a floodplain. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, every time it rains over there, the area is flood. flood. It does. Mm -hmm. And right. so what was forward thinking of us when I came up with my wild idea is I got some of our the engineers involved that are part of our program, the historians and everything. We developed and came up with a full game plan how to raise the whole property six and a half feet so that to get it out of the floodplain, do all the drainage, everything. And I basically delivered that on a silver platter. I'm like, I have everything you need. What else do you what else do we need to make this happen? And I gave them a realistic timeline and budget and the former director at that time was like, oh, you should help go and talk with these aviation guys. And it just spiraled out of control from there. But I still uh -huh. kept on with the vision of it and I'm still pursuing it. Well, and that's it's a great question, you know, by Gay, because the, that's a challenge for anybody trying to do anything in the Santa Barbara area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real estate is I crazy. Mean, it's crazy. Yeah. And so now you're trying to do it for a nonprofit mm -hmm. that needs space. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I could, that'd be a, I could see that being at the top of your list for challenges. Exactly. But, Everything yeah. else, like with our community involvement and stuff, like what we do is uh, like we do a community outreach days where we invite everybody to come out and we'll pair you with a mentor and we get the kids involved too. And we'll show you how to do oil changes, inspections, and everything. We pay for all the materials. Wow. Oh. So for helping those in need who can't afford car serv basic car services and maintenance, we teach them how to do it with the, our certified uh, techs and stuff right there on site. And you can either stand and watch or you can get underneath and get dirty. And the kids loved it. We uh, partnered with the PAL program out of Santa Barbara. But they brought their kids in, uh, out to it. It was it was It's a great fun day of just giving back. And anybody who doesn't know PAL, PAL is an acronym for Police Activities League. Yep. So th think about that backing right there. You've got the police willing oh, yeah. to say, yeah, this is a great thing. This helps, again, as we talked about, keep the kids off the street and, mm -hmm. um, and teach them something. So yeah, you got, you've got great support in the community yeah and it's it, it's really interesting it's like you start with a small idea and then it just grows and then we do our car show events and our cars and coffees and stuff and it was pretty incredible to pull off our expo event that we did that two was huge. years ago. Yeah. yeah. Was it almost 500 cars? 400 cars and 7,000 people. Okay. Oh, huge. Wow. And we had 30 days, uh, we had a 30 day notice. We had to change venues. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had to redesign the whole thing. And then a bunch of our team members came down with covid so it was 10 of us that put on the wow. entire event yeah. wow and it was it was pretty crazy and we weren't allowed to set up the date before either on the golf course so we did it at the glen annie golf course yeah, i love it there, ken, so. ken or kevin runs up to me during the show and he's like okay uh, uh, we need judges will you judge <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man lack what am i judging <laughs> uh, okay. I'll do, sure whatever i'll and do those it. were beautiful cars that would have been oh, hard yeah. to be a judge yeah I, I did you think it was a bikini thing. contest yeah. <laughs> uh, no <laughs> <laughs> you know, and the answer would have been no anyway. <laughs> I have to say, because my girls went to San Marcos High, uh -huh. and I would sit there in our Honda Odyssey and waiting for them to come out of class, mm -hmm. and I would s s park in... Uh, in front of the garage door for the shop, sure. right on the campus there. Yeah. So, and that's no longer either. Correct? No, no. They, I would say it's spotty. They'll they'll have a uh, a teacher come in every now and then, but it's not a consistent program. Okay, so the space is there. The space is there, and even at DP High School, the space is there. Okay. They converted it to the janitor's like uh, break room. 
but oh my God. but all the stuff is there. The lifts are there. Hmm. The tools are there. It's just. It's tragic. It's yeah. It's sad. And this, and this can't be a problem just for the Santa Barbara area. This oh, got no, a problem all, all over the country. All over so the I actually have a, a pretty cool statistic that was told to me by a friend is that in uh, what is it in Los Angeles County back in the eighties and early nineties there was a, out of the hundred and thirty five or hundred yeah hundred and thirty five schools uh, there was a hundred and twenty eight uh, auto shop classes today. There are three. Uh, wow. That's, so, so it is the last 20 years. You were yeah, absolutely. You're right on the money. Absolutely. Yeah. And Gabe, you said still in Ventura County, though, they have shop classes. Uh, they, they at, uh, I think it's Buena. One of the high schools still has still has shop class. I think it's Buena, yeah. Um, they do have shop class, which I was actually surprised that they still do, but they do. But I would imagine it's far and few between. Yeah. And then they also have the really great drag program out of uh, Oxnard down that's here right. too. Yeah. So. And then, again, that's police backed. Yes. Yeah. Drag. And, they're, and they're actually uh, helping us with some of the stuff up there. Wojo's awesome. So oh, well, he's what, a good guy. And I love it because they, they go full custom. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've seen <laughs> some of their work. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. And yeah. then, and that's where they're actually reaching out to some of our mentors and stuff of what we want to bring and my vision of bringing things to the table that are different than your standard automotive program and getting into the design aspects. And we have some pretty cool mentors like Mark Strautenberger, who was a oh, designer yeah. for yeah. Clinne and also the Bugatti and a lot of BMW stuff. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be heavily involved in, uh, we've asked Chip Foos, a local, local legend and stuff like that, to yeah. Great come Santa in. Barbara. Can his dad had the hot rod shop in Santa yeah. Barbara? Yeah. So, oh, wow. had, uh, so, yeah, Sam Foos, who was out there at the airport, yeah. had had his uh, his hot rod shop there. And, some, yeah, pretty a lot of really cool automotive history coming out of Santa Barbara. Yeah. Totally. That's we were nice. talking about this before, is that there's a lot of history in Ventura County, Santa Barbara County, that just people have no idea that also mm -hmm. set the pace for stuff that you see today down even in Pomona and yep. stuff like that yeah. so the the car culture in this area Santa Barbara Ventura County was huge and has slept on the old school guys they kind of kept that with them but mm -hmm. you okay, so you had mentioned earlier about some of the mentors that you have in in the program that are on Instagram well the ones that I know don't even have cell phones sure them. you know they just they have like a little you know <laughs> yeah you know, flip phones phone, yeah you know um so going back to like the mentors that you have uh involved because you know there's people like you know the old school guys don't like the new school guy you know yeah is, yeah exactly right? there's, yeah. Like, there's that challenge but the new school guys want to help and teach and grow and they understand the social media aspect of it and the, the you know distribution of that that content but the old school guys they either don't understand it hate it you yeah. know, but they also don't want their craft to die too. Exactly. So when we had Steve Feist on a week ago, he was like, you know, like I'm trying to, I had to learn all these things and I'm trying to teach them to my kid. And there's certain things that, you know, when I paint a car, I do it a certain way. Just like when you paint a car, you do yep. it a certain way. They just don't want that stuff to, to die. So do you find that a, a challenge as far as like getting mentors and also kind of having guys that teach that to kids as well? Like, no, it's actually, it, it's gone pretty streamlined and blended really well mm. um, from all the different aspects of learning the old school of how to tune a carburetor, like listening to it. And instead of just plugging in with an OBD2 scanner and going on <laughs> your pad and be like, oh, yeah, well, let's let's do this tune. Yeah. Like getting getting back to the nitty gritty basics and building from there. There's mm. subtleties yeah. that... Yeah, and it, come it with it exactly that the old timers are going to know. Yes, that can't yeah. be explained in an app. Yeah, that's why like I heavily lean on my dad when uh, it comes to like tuning carbs and stuff. Yes, I can do it, but he can come out there and be like, "Oh, this sounds a little. It's, it's a little rich here. Yeah, Turn, yeah. Uh, yeah a little sound, a like little yeah. smell. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it doesn't quite cool. smell right. Got to yeah. you know, tweak it a little bit. Yeah. Is that yeah. how you learn from your dad? You look like you're 21 years old. You yeah. have so much knowledge. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. Is like when I actually apply for jobs and stuff, and my resume is like a mile long of all the cool stuff that I've been experienced and things like that. I'm 41, but yeah, I have the baby face. Uh, <laughs> but, your, but your dad mentored you. Yeah, so I actually, a uh, cool, fun side note story is, uh, yeah, I learned my dad was 
used to restore cars and then got into aerospace. And then, but like when I was three years old, I walked out to the garage one day, grabbed a piece of sandpaper and went to the hood of the brand new Volvo. And I was like, look, daddy, I polished. Oh. And so he ran over real quick, grabbed, <laughs> grabbed that piece of sandpaper out of my hand and when the, fortunately didn't have to uh, reshoot the hood of the brand new car. I thought you were going to say you could put your hand in some grease and wiped it all nah. over your hand like yeah. your daughter. Did. Yeah, no, that's yeah. definitely Mazzy. Mazzy is just like, yeah, if, if any opportunity that she sees me out there she's out there and That's then funny she even know, already knows how to drive i already got her in my big lifted uh suburban all the parades everything <laughs> anytime we have opportunity to take her on an open parking lot she's out there driving she so. can reach the pedal she, yeah she's actually stands up and like, oh the steering wheel and, and <laughs> there i still have her right there on my lap but yeah she's she's figured <laughs> that awesome. out so yeah it's it's awesome to well, speaking of your that. long list of, from your resume you were telling us a story about some of the work you've done in the past one of them yeah. was the super snake yes carol shelby super snake that you lived with literally for days and days yeah. tell that story because i think wait, are it's you such sure, a great wait, story. are you sure you're yeah. are you okay with telling the story because i know yeah, it's yeah. quite controversial well, yeah might, no I don't no get, it's all, it's all get good. Trouble? you're good okay yeah good. The, the, the cops <laughs> could show up here is that what you yeah yeah well, i don't know <laughs> i don't know I, I think we the cops could show up that's right or, well, or you'll get sued either way yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out <laughs> okay let's just tell it anyway yeah for our, for our listeners it's gonna be exactly good story. uh so Back in 2008, I was working at a shop in Arizona that we specialized in getting cars ready for Bear Jackson and then Highline uh, repairs for collision stuff, Ferrari, Lamborghini, all that type of stuff. And um, one of the customers brought in uh, this Cobra. I had no idea what it was. Just another Cobra. It was black. Had a sp had a different hood on it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. So I... Uh, Started to take it apart, uh, one in sand, it was sanding on it, and then snapped some pictures and sent it to my dad. And he, uh, a few hours later, he calls me up and he's like, do you know what you're working on? I'm like, mm, it's just a Cobra. He's like, no. That, uh, send me more pictures of the engine. And so I went ahead and took some more pictures, sent it over to him. He's like, that's the Super Snake. And I'm like, what's the super snake? And then he sends me over like <laughs> all the original like history on it and stuff. So ended up I uh, now you're nervous. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, oh great. <laughs> and so uh, ended up I spent uh, my time. I went and uh, had a little bit of body work on it, stripped it down, got it ready. I had two weeks to get this car ready for the Bear Jackson auction. And so I stand it down, get it all done, get the body work cherry, get it in the booth. Uh, the customer at the time went in, uh, gave me the pink code that they wanted, went ahead and shot it. He came the next morning as I'm taking it, unmasking it out of the booth. He's like, uh, that's the wrong color. Oh. And I'm like, oh, no. great. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, well. And you were taking it from black to blue, right? Yeah, back, uh, black to blue. Black. And it was originally when the car was new, was a blue metallic. Okay. And so... I ended up uh, I'm like, all right, well, this is the paint code you gave me. I guess it was the wrong variant, so let's shoot it the darker variant. So put it back in the booth, get it all prepped, and uh, go and shoot it, and the whole thing wrinkles. Oh, no. And I'm just like, oh. oh. <laughs> and so end up uh, spend the next uh, uh, 72 hours going and fighting this thing because every time I go to uh, – to shoot it, it would wrinkle because the paint is so fresh. So I ended up sanding the whole thing down, stripping it back all the way before primer, reprimed it, reblocked it, got it all done. I was there 120 oh. uh, hours straight getting this car done, oh. got it finished, got it delivered. It looked beautiful, <laughs> got it over to the auction and uh, didn't sleep. My apprentice uh, who helped me, uh, he took a couple power naps here and there, but I was just like wired to get this thing done. And got it done, dropped it off. I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go get a couple drinks. We're just, at this point, sleep-deprived and just up and energetic. Uh, let's go celebrate a little Second bit. Second win, right? Second win, yeah. third win at that point. And so uh, we're over at uh, having a couple cocktails at the, at the bar there at Bear Jackson. And then my boss calls me. He's like, um, I'm heading to the shop. Get your butt to this, uh, the back tent over here. Go tell them who you are. Go there now. I'm like, Great. All right. <laughs> so I uh, go in the back there, go and uh, go and uh, get there and open, get past security. And there's Carol Shelby. There's the owner of the car and the owner's a Bear Jackson. And I'm like, 
all right. What's up? Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> then I look at the car and I see an upward ding in the center of the hood and I'm just no. crushed. Oh. And so, yeah, I walk up to the car. My, at that time, my boss shows up a few minutes later and uh, go and I start to uh, work on it to get the ding out of it. Obviously, sleep deprived. Uh, tastefully tipsy <laughs> and uh, going, trying not to fall asleep or pass out on the hood of this car mm -hmm. and just get it done, everything. And at this point, we have 30 minutes before this thing goes across the auction oh. block. And so I'm like, great, hustling, get it done, get it done. Thing goes across the auction block and the hood's still wet and ends up wow. goes at that point sells for the record of 5.5 million dollars which was the most expensive car ever sold at that time wow wow, wow. oh so, my gosh yeah it was it was pretty cool and being there experiencing it and then being standing there on the uh, at the auction block and then uh just watching watching history go by wow. it, it was pretty cool man so yeah, you hadn't slept no for days, nope. it would have only sold for $4 million. Yeah, maybe two, maybe, maybe, maybe two or something. Maybe. Does that wow. sort of thing happen often at these auctions? Um, Depending. There, There's a lot of background stuff that goes with cars getting prepped for auctions and even like SEMA stuff. That uh, last minute SEMA hustles is, I would say, is worse than auction. Like oh, yeah. doing doing SEMA really? builds, oh man, that those have kicked my butt. <laughs> because yeah. of the shorter time frame. Well, you you're you're building them. all year long, trying to get this thing done, and all the crazy ideas that you've had now have to work together, and Let's you're see. you're under the time crunch of trying to get everything back and functioning and actually look good uh, before getting judged by. Everybody, all the experts in industry yeah. from oh, all over wow. the world. Yeah. I fire the best so, of the best, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But you're also at the mercy of like parts delays, and, and I'm sure like oh, like yeah. when COVID happened, it was like almost impossible. To oh yeah, get stuff like that. But you know, you've gone. I've been to SEMA a few times, and you know, sometimes you see somebody's like, "Oh, uh, I see where they're." Mm -hmm. Don't look at that corner. Yeah. Don't look <laughs> there's, at that corner. There's, there's actually a pretty funny uh, Facebook group called SEMA Fails. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? Pretty sure that's pretty popular because yep. there's a lot of them. Yeah. You know, because it, you have these ambitious dreams to like, you know, get this thing. And you're like, hey, in my head, it's going to be great. But the reality is like, oh, crap, it's November 8th. We got to get this thing over to yeah. Vegas. Yeah. You know, and it yeah. has to go regardless. Well, and I would yeah, imagine just, one way or another, it's got to yeah. make it. Yeah. And just getting it there. Yeah. Yeah. Getting it there And then safely. you get it there and then what? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So. Now, with with all these great projects that you've done, do you still get the same gratification from, of course, dealing with a Shelby car, you know, Super Snake, rare mm -hmm. uh, car, to going back to the shop and doing an oil change? Because I yeah. feel that energy that you take pride in doing that one small thing yeah. to this big thing, but you treat it the same. Yeah, I treat it the same. It's it's actually to me, my passion is teaching others how to do it. That's awesome. And it's like if I know something. I'll pass it on. And if I don't know something and you know something, I'm going to ask you and be that sponge and want to learn it and, and get excited about yeah. it. Even though it might be the, the most crappiest thing to do that day. It's That's awesome. It's cool to learn. You like if, if you approach things as a sponge is how like, I really like to uh, put it is you're always going to pick up really cool and fun things from everybody in life. It's true. That's yeah. awesome. And everything yeah. you do. Yeah. I have to ask you real quickly. This is something we were talking about recently about selling one of your vehicles. And you've sold cars. Yeah. Who do you look for to buy your car? And do they have to have the same love and passion for that car that you do? No. Um, I I really like to see if somebody's not going to totally destroy what I just built. <laughs> but, but at the same time, it, it depends. It's like, yeah, it's... Turning on those, uh, passing on the torch to the the next person of leaving it to a point where they can modify it a little bit to their own. How I like to do when I do a custom build and stuff like that is I like to make it look stock but not be stock. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the uh, projects that we got for a hot rod project is a 66 Lincoln Continental convertible that uh, I went ahead. The, the motor went out on it when we originally went to go look at it. And I was talking to the customer who was not a car guy. He's like, oh, just do whatever. Like, go have fun with it. So I went ahead and made the phone call, and I had an LSA dropped off at the <laughs> house. Oh. So I got uh, This is I, the baby blue one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, baby, baby blue. blue. Yeah, so, yeah, we got, so we got a, 
a brand new 650 horse uh, LSA in what looks to be a stock uh, 66 four door convertible. That's cool. And uh, so we've been uh, have some of our amazing mentors uh, go ahead and teach how to do some of the fabrication in the engine bay of making some apron covers and stuff like that. And we mm -hmm. moved the firewall forward so we can put vintage air behind it. So you keeping it baby blue. Yeah. We're yeah. not even you, touching yeah, the, touch paint the paint. Yeah. That's, that's cool. awesome. I mean, when I so, saw there last time, you guys said, oh, we're not messing with the paint. Yeah. Mm. But you won't be able to tell the difference. No, you no, it, it'll look exactly like bone stock. Even the interior, it's going to look bone stock, but you got a six speed automatic transmission on the column right there. Oh, and, wow. and all the, all the creature comforts of everything that you want, but just old how, cool, how close are you with that car? Because um, I remember seeing it maybe a year and a half ago. Yeah, so we're at the point of wiring right now. Oh, okay. So uh, motors in, trannies in. Um, got some of the plumbing work left, but not bad. We've had some delays of just being able to do it and, and work on it and stuff with everybody's schedule because obviously not being able to do this full time with I'll have to have a real job. <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately it gets in the way. Yeah. But yeah, no, it um it's it's been a great project and we got some pretty cool ones on our uh like stash list that are ready to go. That, Can't wait to get to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Once we have our facility uh that we're gonna do some pretty cool things that have come from my crazy mindset of ideas and projects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, Sounds awesome. Yeah. Are you always working on multiple cars at the same time, or no? You stay one car and everybody works on it. Um, depending on what we're doing. So if it's like once we have our facility, we'll have multiple projects going on at at the same time. So and those projects are already lined up, like I was mentioning. So we have a forty eight Willys Jeepster that we're going to build for SEMA that will be on a trophy truck chassis. Uh, we have a fifty seven, uh, yeah, fifty seven Nomad chassis that was donated generously, brand new custom chassis that's actually hanging at uh, Joji Barris's wall in there next to the Batmobile. Oh, there you go. There. Oh. So. Um, but that one's pending. We're going to do a tribute to Shazoom, a Boyd Coddington car, but make it a nomad wagon. Mm. And so I got some crazy designs to do something with that and a few other fun projects in between, but yeah, just get everybody else and let everybody else add their own two cents and design ideas to it. Get the kids uh, creative wheels. Now what happens after these cars are built? Uh, they, you guys go for sale to generate more, uh, funds to... <laughs> No, fun, fun. no, they, they come to West of Tulsa. And they're gonna she's, do they? Yeah, they're gonna have to for now on. First yeah, of all, yeah. I'd love to see you drive an LSA powered anything. Because <laughs> I'm okay. So you, we're on in the same line because I'm mm -hmm. the one who doesn't leave a car stock and mm -hmm. don't ever sell a stock car to me because mm -hmm. I will never leave it stock. Mm -hmm. Our previous guests, you know, almost cringed when I talked about like you know mm -hmm. s swapping motors and uh, old Mercedes or sure. whatever. But um, yeah, I'm the odd man out here. So like you know. I'm all about you know you want LS oh cool let's put it or put a two J in it or yeah. whatever you know so are you offering uh, like in, in these services do you cover every aspect of it like not so, just paint not just fabrication yeah like, we're we're gonna cover everything from literally drawing this uh, drawing it out on a piece of paper designing all the custom parts taking that going and teaching uh, full three uh, D scanning three D printing. Mm -hmm. uh, Every aspect of prototyping, building the parts, and then taking it into CNC, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, for what we're going to do with cars, we're going to build cars for clients. And then we're also going to build in-house ones that we will eventually sell off and stuff like that, too, to help generate the... The overhead uh, costs and stuff like that. Too. So you will. So you could have customers bringing in their cars. Say, hey, I want you to build me this car, and yeah. for whatever. Okay. And cool. and what's cool about it is we can build your car, and the the labor aspect is a tax deductible donation to the nonprofit. That's oh. cool. Yeah. yeah so it's all. Cool. So you can write it off. Build your dream car and write it off. Wow. And you are so, what five hundred one c three. Yeah. And you went through that whole process. Whole That's, process. Yeah. It was actually pretty streamlined. Well, it was. It sounded scarier than it was, but it <laughs> it actually it was it was pretty quick. Wow. So, well, very exciting. I, anything we can do to help you through this process because we're all excited about what yeah, you're doing, great, and we think this project. is a a great mission. Yeah, um, it's at this point it's community awareness, and yeah, if people want to help and donate towards the cause, uh, visit our website, send me an email, things like that. We'll just generally open to be there and uh, support our community. We'll yeah. sick helm on the superintendent. 
Yeah, yeah. perfect. Or the airport manager. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. We'll stick helm on him. That'll, yeah. that'll take care of the problem. Exactly. Steve Fai yeah. said he's wanting to help in some way, oh, too, in yeah. some capacity. Yeah. Oh, We're going to yeah. sign him well, up exactly. as well. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, because like I said, it's like merging the old school with the new school. Because yep. all the guys that, like uh, our buddy Steve, that, who was on the show prior, they don't go on Instagram. They may have a Facebook page, yeah. but they're not really active. And, you know, they're not millennials. They're not, like, yeah. you yeah. know, on their phone all day long. Exactly. But um, they do want to help. They But, you know, also, you know, especially being car guys, you have to approach them differently. They can just be like, "Hey, man, come help us real quick!" And we're like, "Dude, yeah. who are you? Is some kind of clown?" <laughs> right. You know, and that and there's a reason why those guys then don't go to car shows because that and they don't go to cars and coffee because they're not going to take their you know and they're like, "I want nobody touching my car," but, but they still want to like they want they, the recognition of it and seeing yeah. and, and they, they also want people, and they also yeah. want people to know like you know how to do it the right way yeah. Yeah. you know and everybody what the right way is subjective but. Quality. They want quality. They don't right. want junk. And you know, there's a lot of junk out there. Oh yeah. And, and that's a big and a bit been a big problem too. People don't want to build cars anymore because they don't want to get ripped off. I mean, I, it's mm-hmm. happened to me a few times. You know, it's just, I'm sure it's happened to a ton of people that are listening to this right now. Mm-hmm. You know, so like you know, are you you're developing a generation, a new generation of guys that if taught the right way and have good sense and are appreciative, they will extend that to their future customers. And maybe there will be a new wave of, you know, mod- uh, modifiers or hot rodders or even just guys that, that can restore a car. Oh, yeah. You know, because, uh, you know, rest- restoration is a big deal, you know. And yep. th- there'll be a lot of, like, in maybe 15, 20 years, a lot of guys want to restore their Hondas. They're already doing that, you yeah. know, mm-hmm. little Civics and stuff like that. And that's what they grew up with. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, so you know, I think it's really cool to offer that that kind of um project i've never really heard of this anywhere else so this is really cool have you heard about this i mean have there been tried in other parts of the country there are a couple other programs that are somewhat similar but a little bit different more of either they're solely based on uh doing engine mechanic repair and stuff like that or they do body shop repair and there are tech schools and stuff that are there i went through tech school uh i went to wyotech uh but um, they're they're not reaching uh, the wide enough footprint mm. is uh, is the problem. Mm. And like when I was in high school and stuff, they pushed everybody to college. Go to college. Mm-hmm. Go to college. Mm-hmm. You need to go to college. Well, there's such a huge gap now because they forced everybody either to go to college or you're gonna do nothing. And so now like. As you can see, when you go to your local dealership and try to get a normal mechanic to work on your stuff, they're booked like months out. Yep. Ten, like five years ago, eight years ago, there wasn't that issue. You go to the drive up to the dealership, you could drop your keys and, and go. Now it's like 30 to 60, maybe 90 days before you can get in and get the basic services done on your car. And yeah. It's mm-hmm. really sad. So, well, with our program, we're just trying to give everybody the the boost of confidence to get out there and and do it because it's not difficult it takes patience it takes direction but and it and it's actually really fun and some of the other things and aspects that we do is we have a uh, a network of some of the professional race teams that do off-road racing that are involved with our project as well so we'll take a group of people out to uh the desert and go put them in trophy trucks and class one buggies and Sweet. let them go and go for a ride and then give them the opportunity to uh, practice as a pit crew <clears throat> and see how to do the changes and stuff like that. And it it really grabbed the second that you go and uh, give somebody that experience of getting the dirt in their, in yeah. their uh, like teeth and stuff like yeah. that and being out there and watch the excitement as, as a trophy truck passes you on the dirt at 135 miles an hour it's <laughs> it's different yeah, yeah i mean so. it's how many people would actually know that you can make a career out of that you know you yeah. can be part of a race team like wait i can get paid to go do this for a team or whatever yeah you know and it's good money oh it oh. i mean we, a trophy truck you know just like the dollar amount just bing, 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 you know that I mean that's a whole different game. Drag yeah. racing is one thing. Tro- I mean tro- trophy truck racing that's that baller stuff right there. Yeah. Well, if you think about it too, if if that kind of skill is disappearing slowly, you're in high demand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can charge whatever right. you want. To, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's and then that's, that's why dealership prices have gone up for yeah. for mm-hmm. tech work and stuff yeah. like that. And so. you know, it seems to me, and I don't, you know, I have a I have a young daughter, but like you know, the kids that growing up now, they seem to be. With so much stuff they could do on a phone, they're already starting to like. Be like is there anything else outside of mm-hmm. this phone? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to go touch something. We we were meant to touch things and 
fix things and building them, break things, and you know, I'm better at that's breaking. That's what this whole museum is about. Absolutely, ability. Yeah, we're all about that, you know. Yeah. And and I feel like that's a. It doesn't matter what time period. That's always going to be maybe cyclical, but people are always going to want to do that. But people they don't know what they don't know. But if you can expose them to think, hey, this could be a possibility. You could go work on a trophy truck. You could go work on a drag car. You can go mm -hmm. work on a show car. You could learn how to change oil. That could be mm -hmm. just gratifying enough. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I mean, how many people do we know not know how to change their tire or their oil? That's really sad because like one one of the things I used to do with being a tow truck driver for AAA. Like, I'd show up to uh, these college kids, big old, huge, strong guys, and four of them sitting there with a flat tire. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. And I'd actually go and show them, and like, all right, I've got to teach you guys how to do this. Yeah. Uh, and stuff like that. But no, and then that's one of the things with uh, our program and is going after the elementary and, jun and junior high kids yeah. mm. because... Just as uh, with sports, you uh, want to get people, the kids involved early and learn teamwork yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. And people always push their kids towards sports. Well, why not push them towards working with tools and mm -hmm. learning and having those opportunities? Mm -hmm. and Which is so, the way it was 40, 50 years ago. Exactly. I mean, that's what I did. It was yeah. like work on the car in the driveway. Exactly. You know? I was like, here, go. And my dad encouraged it. Yeah. He's yeah. Like, hey, let's go play with this. Do you yeah. have people who don't, even, don't know how to use a ruler? No. How to oh, ruler. measurements. Measurements. No. Or yeah. key. Right. Yeah, but with your program and and all the great skills that you you want to teach and and have them develop, is there a component of the of the program where you concentrate and embrace the business aspect? So when I after we teach you the skill, how do you go market yourself? I think that component is mm -hmm. is really important. Is that something that you're gonna uh, yeah. teach as well with the mentorship? Yeah, no, we actually have a bunch of the local companies that are willing and like call me weekly like hey do you have a tech or uh there's even some of the aerospace companies local because oh, obviously goleta area is very well packed with uh tech tech, yeah. tech work and uh yeah as you as long as you are patient and can d learn and grab a tool and stuff like that they're willing and able to uh, take you in as an intern and That's train awesome. you and stuff like that. Yeah. And once we have our program f uh, fully rolling, it's going to be an accredited program. Oh, so nice. you'll be uh -huh. actually not only be able to get your, if you're in still in high school, you get your high school credits, you're going to get college credits. Oh, nice. And then we're also working to where we're going to partner with some of the actual um big name companies uh, and actually we've with some of the dealers that are ready to pull pull in and offer factory uh, training as part of the oh, as nice. part of the program wow you know? so the opportunity will be there as soon as we have a place to call home <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah like we're right now we're doing out of our own gr uh, garages driveways and at uh, South Coast Church in Goleta yeah. so so you said uh, when you had started this uh, in your living room with a couple buddies or whatever, yeah. I'm curious to know what sparked this idea. Like, in that, I'd like to put myself in that conversation you guys were having in your living room or in your house or whatever. Mm -hmm. How did this all come about? What, what made you just say, like, you know what, we need to do something about this? What was it that well, drove you to do that? When I worked as a tech in the in the different shops and stuff, and I was always willing to. Uh, to help people and train people. And so I'd have all my different friends all the time that were either in between jobs or whatnot or had a couple days off. They would pop by my shop and I'm like, hey, you want to learn? Yeah. So I'd go and teach them. And they're now one, uh, all full-blown uh, techs and stuff That's like that. Cool. That are their shade sheared mechanics that know how to do it. And they fell in love with the passion of, of working on the cars and stuff like that. And it's always been one of my like heart projects i would i call it and i've always had a passion to just teach people what i know and i have a way to, pa to pass it on to the next the uh, next person and kind of like paying it forward that's mm. awesome and so uh cuz i've went between learning from my dad and other local hot rod guys in in santa barbara that are just legends in themselves um just having those opportunities really uh basically changed my path and my journey of what what it's been going on as a tech and in, in, in industry. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to pay it forward and do things right. And I had this idea and then I told my friends, they're like, you should really do this. Mm. Like, 
how do we make it happen? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we, we got talking and I actually told uh, the pastor at the, at the church at, uh, at South coast church. And he's a car guy as well. He's mm -hmm. got a old Chevy pickup and he's, uh, he's like, let's do it. Like, wow. stop talking about it. Let's do it. Mm. So a month later, we had our first service day uh, activity there at the church. We had 60 cars that we fixed for free and uh, got all, everything was donated. Uh, and then a month after that, we, which was in the height of just getting out of the first year of COVID, was the first like car show that uh, out in Santa Barbara. So we had 175 cars and 2,000 people show up to our event, which was just word of mouth. And we had guys from all over California come up wow. some pretty, uh, pretty special builds and stuff like that. And it was, it was really cool to see everybody just come out after being so concluded uh, yeah, yeah. like back to come out and uh, just be excited to be able to see everybody and, yeah. Yeah. and see what everybody's been building in the, in the downtime. And you're being, yeah. you're working on now another project in terms of big show. Yes. So you're working on that now. I mean, the details aren't completely worked out, so I'm kind of throwing this at you. But sure. But yeah. it's it, it, hopefully sometime here in 2024, maybe fall. Are we uh, thinking or summer? We're, we're going to do May third week of May. We're getting everything lined up, but we're going to build a full car weekend in Santa Barbara. So we're going to do a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event of different things. So we're going to do a cruise night. We're going to do a fundraising gala. We're going to do a rally. We're going to do, and then finish it off with a big show. And so we're... Uh, and to benefit and Community benefit, Hot Rod Project. Right? Benefit uh, Community Hot Rod Project to get our vocational training center up and running. And that's that's where all our funds go, is direct back into making things happen and our events. Mm, yeah. uh, we, we do our weekly cars and coffee events uh, up in Santa Barbara. We have... One in Goleta on the second, fourth Saturday of every month at South Coast Church. And then we do every Sunday Lower Manning Park in Montecito. So yeah. we just try to give back as much as possible and have a good time with it and just network with everybody. So if anybody wants to come and join our cause, send an email, give me a call. Happy to have you. We're always wide open for everybody to come up. And we'd, we'd love to do whatever it takes to help. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, for, but I have to ask a very important question right now. Yep. Very important. I'm yep. surprised we took this long to even get to this point, which is what cars are you rocking with right now? What kind of cars you got in the stable? So I have uh, my, f my dad's and my father-son project for the last 25-plus years. It's a 64 Nova Super Sport. Ooh. I got a... Nice. Uh, I got our 48 Willys Jeepster for the uh, nonprofit. And then I have a 67 Suburban on a 12 inch lift on 40s. Nice. Uh, oh, that wow. is going to be getting a Duramax swap here pretty shortly. Oh, sweet. So it's on one tons already, but the 350 in it, it's got to go. It's not enough power. LF? I, um, no, it's just going to go Duramax. Oh, for the truck. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, sorry, I'm thinking about Nova. You said Nova. Yeah, Nova. I, I, my mind just went to the Nova. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, the Nova's going just a, a, a mildly build 350. Nice driver, but nice. body and paintwork on that thing is flawless. Yeah. I've, I, there, There's a couple body uh, things in, in Nova bodies on the 62 to 65s that uh, naturally have waves in the panel. Hmm. I spent 10 years to make sure that they weren't there. So mm. I, I I perfected that body and that thing. <laughs> so you is massaged awesome. it. You didn't slap with a bunch of bondo on it. No, you know, no, no. Because uh, you know no. a, a bunch of guys here in this room. I was like, yeah, this guy put a bunch of bondo in that thing. Oh yeah, no, no, out. I'm not a I'm not a cave and pave it type of person. <laughs> but no, there was actually a, another build that at our last event uh, for our toy drive in December. Uh, I painted. I did the body work and paint on this uh, '72 Nova uh, 12 years ago. And it was his first time coming out and making its debut. And what what we did, which was really unique, is he wanted it Yanko green. And I ended up uh, on the, on, if you are familiar with those body lines on the side, they're normally round. I ended up putting 69 uh, Camaro hard-shaped body line down the center of the door panel, quarter panel, front to back, the, uh, the whole length of it, oh. with, using a bullseye pick and did it all metal-shaped. So wow. I went in and took off all the skins, did all, uh, put in all the, the body line into it, and it you will look at, we'll walk up to the car and we're like, something's different. Sure. Oh. But it, it, it made the car look so awesome and unique, but it looks stock. So. Yeah, that, like can that. you ever imagine now this might be an incredible challenge or a mm -hmm. ridiculous thought 
doing a build on a Tesla? Uh, yeah, I actually have a friend down in LA that uh, he's done some pretty amazing stuff that he's actually cut the body off a of Model 3 and put a Mercedes Goldwing on it. Oh. And so, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, with Beth, um, I'm asking that awesome question. What is your, I mean, all your cars are gas guzzlers and performers. What is your take on the, you know, with EVs and the future of that? Or would you incorporate a component of teaching, you know, the 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 future about, you know, what that could be? Definitely. Yeah. You, that's the future's coming. It's electric and doing the conversions and stuff like that. To totally. We have to. Yeah. It's like... Most of the cars are plug and play and stuff like that. And you can get a lot of power out of the, uh, the electric motor. Mm. It's just, yeah, you got to have know your computer systems and have somebody who knows how to do the coding and everything. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, that's where the market is. And like they converted project X, one of the famous hot rod 57 Chevys to electric a couple of years mm. ago. And so a lot of the stuff at SEMA you're seeing, creep in a lot of the, the like Conversion. conversions and yeah. stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, and now if you see a car that has no motor in it... There's a possibility of doing whatever That's you what are. they say. It's like yeah. one of the first... You'll see somebody, at, at least somebody in the crowd go, ah, you could drop an electric motor in that thing. <laughs> yeah. But the Tesla is so sparsely designed, which yeah. is, you know, you're talking about Cobras and Shelbys and all these wonderful things. Um, so... I didn't know if there was any interest with just the body style and what you would do with it, but you just explained. Yeah, no, there's there's a lot of things you can do with, do with those, and those cars are actually really simply put together. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, like, you can, two well-versed techs can have that thing down to bare bones in a matter of hours pretty quick. Yeah. They, uh, it, it's pretty surprising to me how, how fast they come apart. Yeah, I have one. It looks like it was snapped together. Yeah. Odd, oddly enough, it's a decent car. You like it. I, I like it. I like it for what it does. It's a toaster, and it makes toast really, really well. There you go. But that's all I <laughs> want it for. It, 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 look, I get it. Guys are like, EVs are just, they're not, they're not going to last. And, and then you have the flip side of that. But it's like I look at like somebody who builds a 64 Nova. You could build a Pro Street, you know, Pro Touring, or you could build a Gasser. Mm -hmm. Three totally different types of guys. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure all three can talk crap about each other. Yep. But that would just be another thing. An EV swapped F100 or whatever is cool, but it's not for everybody. And that's okay. And that's what cool about what rotting is all about. It's doing things that you want to do. It right. doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. You do what you want to do, you yes. know? And that's the lead into our uh, our rat rod show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Take whatever, every piece you can find and put Mash it on it there, up. right? Johnny Cash it. Yeah, that's it. Johnny Cash it. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, before we forget, because I know we'll forget if we don't do this now, is uh, what is the uh, how how do people get a hold of you? How do they contact you? How do they uh, get what's the website and your sure. socials and all that? Uh, stuff? For social media, it's at the community hot rod project dot com, um, and same thing with like our website and stuff. But that or send us an email as well. So uh, can mo most of the stuff we do is Instagram, but we we try to stay current with our stuff. We're going to be in revamping our website shortly, hopefully. Cool. But um, yeah, Instagram's like the lead us that or send send an email through the the website currently, mm -hmm. and I'll get you on the list and uh, we'll get cool. get you up to I'd love to, all stuff. to cover some of the cars you guys yeah. are working on because yeah. I'm pretty sure our listeners too want to want to sure. see what kind of cars you guys got going. Because well, especially yeah. with the the Lincoln, yeah. we've, I've already taken a bunch of photos of the yeah, Lincoln yeah. back before they swapped swapped out. Yeah, and I I'll, I'll, we'll give you guys some of the shots so you can oh, for sure. oh, for yeah. share yeah. with great. everybody to to see some of the cool stuff we had. Uh, Morgan Clark from Morgan Clark Design uh, help out with some of the aluminum work in the engine bay and stuff, and it it's really amazing. Be cool so. to see a, some young kid, you know, in this day and age, put down his iPhone and pick up, like you know, get some sheet metal on an English wheel and yeah. start <laughs> massaging. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I I've tried messing. Up, I was like, dude, this is not for me. Or or, <laughs> or or he takes his phone and puts it in there. Too, yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> put your phone on the English it. wheel. So then you have an iPhone like this. <laughs> you know. I'd be I'd be impressed if you made your iPhone. <laughs> or that'd be impressive actually. Uh, we love your vision and your dedication. Yes. Thank you. Thank yes. you for everything yeah, you've, yeah, you're, yeah. you've done and what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Come on back. Yeah, when you get some of those things running, we'd oh, yeah. love to see it. Oh, Definitely, yeah. and have you guys come out to our events yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. And we got we got some pretty crazy fun ideas uh, for things of the future. So sweet. It would uh, be awesome to have you guys come out. So one last question: Have you seen Helm's outtakes video yet? <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, bits and pieces. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> yeah. all right. So you're, Thank you're, you. Yeah, you're getting famous there. No, I I'm love telling that. you, I we're gonna make that. this thing go viral. That's exactly. what's making me famous right now. There you uh, go. Looper reel. Uh, yeah. Hey, do something funny. I know. I can't. Everybody's gonna be coming up to you at the show. Exactly. Hey, do something funny, man. <laughs> funny man. I know, right? Like, Mr. Actually, funny Man. Yeah. They'll, they'll just walk up to him and go, giggle for me. <laughs> <laughs> because that's, that's what that's that what is. You. It's so funny. Now, now you got to tell your your best car joke. Car Ooh. joke. Oh, you got, you got all kinds of dumb jokes. I don't, go I don't, for it. Not this the is car your time joke. to shine. Oh, no. I'm, uh, that's that's putting me on the spot. Uh, there you I gotta, go. I got I to gotta think about that. Yeah, I got to back to me. It. Actually, but, that, but that I, could be outtakes number two. Exactly. If you give it a shot. <laughs> but I had um, one question, uh, which I wanted to um, ask earlier. I know that your dad has played a big role in um, inspiring you and, and probably your biggest mentor. Mm -hmm. But growing up, who are the other mentors um, that – that you looked up to from designers or it could or be from a different field sure that kind of inspired it to kind of you know because i feel as though this project is not just you're dealing with cards as the common denominator but mm -hmm. it spans across exactly well what really uh, caught my interest was in junior high is i uh for an assignment i decided to do the biography on boyd connington Mm. And he was still around at the time. Yeah. And I reached out and talked to him and I ended up developing a really great relationship with him. And he ended up bringing Shazoom and Cadzilla up to Santa Barbara and uh, showed uh showcased him for my junior high class That's wow. super and so cool. on, on his way to the Oakland Roadster show. Oh. And so back when they that, used to have it, cool. uh, have it there. Wow. and so I, um, <laughs> and then we kept in contact throughout the years, uh, up until when I was getting ready to graduate from high school and I was deciding whether or not to go into the field and start building cars or go to tech school. And so when I was up there, he was doing the debut of Led Zephyr. Uh, and I brought my sketchbook of different things because when I actually was in class in high school and junior high and everything, I would listen to the teachers, but I'd be drawing the whole time. And some of the teachers hated it. Other <laughs> teachers understood. But that's where my mind was. Is like I could understand what they were talking about. I would basically put it in another section and then just continue just drawing and be able to answer the questions. As long like as that. you passed. As right. long as I passed, yeah. whatever. And so when I was up there, uh, one in, um, he saw that I came uh, to the show and he stopped everything that he was doing wow. uh, just before the, uh, the unveiling of Led Zephyr. And he's like, hold on. Like I pulled me aside, uh, him and his wife and sat down with me and my dad, and we were talking for about 45 minutes, and he's going through my sketches, talking, I was like, oh, when'd you do this, when'd you do that? And then all of a sudden he was going through it, and he stopped, and he's like, when did you do this drawing? And I'm like, oh, that that one, uh, that was a sketch like, like eight months ago, whatever, this, that, nothing. He's like, no, 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 tell me more about this. And so we went and we were talking about it, and uh, he was like, come with me. And so and at this point, everybody's waiting for the unveiling and like <laughs> surrounding with all the cameras and everything wow. that he's like, he goes and he's like, just stand here with us. And so he goes and starts talking about Led Zephyr. And I had no idea what Led Zephyr was. And, anything and it's covered up, right? It's all covered up. Right. And then they go and they unveil it. And it's almost to the T what I drew. Oh my god! Wow. And so was he suspicious he was, of you? He's like, did you? No, nah, he, he was. He was just really impressed that my mind went to wow. that, and it was uh. almost identical to that. And uh, if, for those who don't know that car or the other legendary car at that time, which was the Led uh, the Zephyr called Scrape. Okay. And now they make a bunch of uh, custom uh, replicas of that one too. Wow. But it was uh, that's amazing. Yeah, and so he was like, well. Go to tech school, go finish that, and then when you're done, you got a job with me. Oh. And so, I went to tech school and up at Wyo Tech. Did did my time, as I say, up there for I was up there for two years. It was it was interesting, put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I got back from that, I got offered to uh, with a job uh, to get into the step program for BMW. So oh. I went into that. Did. Went through that, learned all the factory uh, collision stuff for uh, step, and ended up not going into the hot rodding side of things right away. And um, 
had the opportunity there, got to travel, do some really unique builds and everything within that program. And uh, the network that I created after that uh, led me into doing the hot rods and stuff that I do today. Oh, that's amazing. That's pretty cool. That's a cool story. That's a beautiful story. That brought tears to my arm. Oh, that's amazing. (laughs) Really, truly, that's a beautiful story. So so Boyd Coddington and Carol Shelby. I know. Yeah. And two huge (laughs) names. That's pretty nice to have have those guys in your history. I love it. And that can't be faked. No. Oh, no, yeah. No, <laughs> a band like that exactly. taking you on as yeah. a mentor, yeah. mentee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. And it was, I, I really, if I were to go back in time, I, I probably would have told myself to go down the route of having Boyd take me under the wing and really chasing that passion. But at the same token, the stuff that I got to experience and the opportunities that I've had going the other route and yeah uh, and stuff has been exponential mm. so i wouldn't so you didn't regret anything i didn't i don't regret it yeah exactly yeah. it was it was uh, taking life as a sponge and learning oh. from i it, love man. that yeah for sure yeah. man i was that same student too so i'd like to maybe at some point share our um notebooks in high school because i was i'm a designer so sure. everything above mm-hmm. the the double college rule line is doodles all over oh, so yeah. i know i know <laughs> what you were doing at that time yeah, yeah. Great so that's minds. that's amazing. Yeah. That's Great amazing. minds, for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us today. Well, yeah. thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Driving up the 101 freeway from Santa Barbara to... Oh, yeah. Are you you driving down. Down. Down, down, yeah. yeah. Driving Beautiful down. drive, though. Can't can't knock having the recon well, it's very just nice. after yeah. the rain. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So. Well, thank you, and thank you for watching. Uh, check out our socials. Please like, follow, and subscribe. All right, thank yeah. you. <laughs> and then we have our YouTube channel all right and you check that out but that's actually where you're going to find helms outtake <laughs> you gotta see them i know i keep it that's the plug it, for today we're, we're pushing out that's the plug we're pushing that, outtakes that yeah, is my exactly. favorite one. that one so that that's that cheers up our lives <laughs> right my day every day i yeah, love that's that it. yeah so check out helms outtakes and we also have the tip line form that you can go to our website west of tulsa.com Go to the tip line, fill it out, because you may join us here in studio. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Yeah. Be awesome. All right. Thanks for watching, and uh, we will see you west of Tulsa.